everyone. Is everyone ready? Okay. A very good morning. I would like to be to all the honorable speakers, distinguished guests, and fellow students. Allow me to start. My name is Beatrice Anak Musa, and I will be your moderator for today. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start the talk, in order to avoid any unnecessary interruptions, I would like to ask everyone to mute their microphones. And if you have any question during the talk later, do put them in the chat box as our team will collect them for the Q&A sessions later on. Before we completely deep dived into the today's talk, allow me to explain what is RINTIS. RINTIS is the abbreviations for research innovations towards integrations and sustainabilities, which was initiated by Association Professor Hasno Jamal Saidon in 2004 as an annual final year project exhibition that features the three designs departments in the School of the Arts USM. The departments involved are graphic communications, new media design and technology, and product design. RINTIS is the epilogue of understudies endeavors before graduations, permitting them to feature their creative work for conceivable commercialization commercialization i forgive that my, my apologies uh, it likewise fill in as pathway for the students to debut the into the industry and as advertised today is the first day of rinti's online and to have a great kickstart we are blessed with a very interesting use and useful res resourceful talk by cable and uh, for and for everyone's information cable is a job platform that connects candidates directly to the line manager, which allowing both parties to have the insight on jobs, expectations and working style, even before meeting for the physical in, physical interview. And to start, we would like to welcome Ms. Suswe, Camelia and Esther from the community lead of Cable, who will be giving the talk for today's topic, which is swipe right on your internship. So without further ado, the floor is now yours, Ms. Suswe. Uh, I'm so sorry, Miss. I think you have to unmute your mic. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hi. Sorry. Apologies. Um, I am Zihui. I'm the committee lead of Cable. And actually, um, Camilla is the founder of Cable. So she will begin the talk with a brief introduction first. So, yeah. Okay. So, hi, everyone. My name is Camilla. I am the founder of Cable. So I'm very glad to be invited, uh, very honored to be invited for this uh, Rinti Week uh, uh, by USM SOA. Uh, so just a brief introduction. And before that, I'm really grateful to uh, Dr. Hanim and the Rintis community that my team and I are given this opportunity, you know, to have a session with all of you here. Yeah. So um, Cable is actually a Tinder-like mobile recruitment app that connects you to your future boss, uh, just like how Beatrice has actually um, introduced us. Thank you very much. So here with me again today uh, is Esther, the marketing lead, and Zihui, the community lead for Cable. Now, Cable is a job matching app that connects hirers and job seekers directly to share expectations, goals, and values. And this is very important, you know, for any job seeker when they are about to explore and accept a job. My team and I has developed this since uh, 2019 with a vision to build a world where people can have fulfilling careers and businesses are sustainable and investable with the right people in the company. Now, Cable uh, is built uh, as a platform to help students and fresh grads get their internship placement and their first job. So we are the career launchpad for early talents like you guys. Our mission is to influence young leaders like you guys to take up the challenge of your career by finding the company that is aligned with your purpose and dreams. Now, just to go a little bit deep dive onto the current situation right now, well, um, after all the years of hard work, all nighters, and of course, yes, a lot of fun in the uni, uni is finally over for some of you and the career is going to start soon. Right? Along with the assignment, you are probably going to feel a little bit anxious and perhaps even wondering 
if you're going to be the lucky one to land a job quite quickly. Now, each year, Malaysia produces 300,000 graduates on an annual basis, and you are one of them. Now, just to give you a, uh, a perspective, you know, in 2020, the number of unemployed graduates has increased by 22.5%. Look, I'm not showing the, you this to, you know, this number to scare you, but this is a reality. The job market out there is getting more and more competitive and having a degree is a given. It's definitely a door opener, but everybody else that comes in with their resume is already a degree holder. So how are you going to differentiate yourself from everyone else? Um, how to stand out? Now, a little bit more about statistics uh, to show you how difficult it's going to be in terms of searching for jobs. 70% of resumes are actually not seen by human eyes. There's this system uh, in place to check it on behalf of the humans to, to filter you know, those resumes out. And the system that I'm talking about, it's called ATS, right? 80% of the large companies out there actually use ATS to filter the candidates, right? And if you are lucky enough to actually beat the system, you probably go to the next, you know, 20% or 30%. And meanwhile, 48% of the companies actually use job advertisements, but there's just too much information going on sometimes. So when I say job advertisements, I'm quite sure that you know uh, LinkedIn, you probably know uh, Job Street as well. These are the most uh, common names out there. And 46% of the companies actually rely on recommendations and referral from people they know and trust around them. So it sure is a difficult today to get a job, you know, especially when you don't have the experience and the right network. I mean, Nothing to be blamed, right? It's a norm actually for all uh, uh, fresh grads or students like you. How is it that you're going to get a corporate connection? So I think some of you are going to, you know, relate to this meme very soon. You know, it's so bittersweet to graduate. Finally, it's over all your hard work and then be labeled as potentially unemployed. And we don't want that. So it's okay. Right, and that you guys have already made it to where you are right now, and you know we are very thankful that you actually seated here to you know um, for us to help you out in this. So we got you, and let's go through this all together. Now today, our goal is to help you get hired quickly. How to beat all those statistics to be on top of everything else? Today you will go through a crash course on learning how to stand out on in your internship and job search by using cable app. Okay, anyone here feels like this guy now, right? Very confident, you've got the skills, you've picked up through your years of education. Now, you must have confidence in yourself, uh, for sure, right? But if only have confidence, it won't get you anywhere, right? You need to learn how to market yourself, how to communicate in multiple channels, recruitment channels, I'm saying, to show your potential hire okay i'm sure you have either heard of a or experienced this yourself job seekers apply for a job and then they get ghosted or rejected because they've got no experience you may think that it is hard to convince the hires because you are a fresh grad you have no work experience and that is true all right and that's okay so the reason could be either one of those statistics earlier or perhaps you do not share enough of your passion or your branding, that your resume looks the same like everybody else. So failure to stand out in the eyes of a hirer may be one of the major reasons as well, besides the statistics that I've shown you earlier, right? So like I share with you, the number of the graduates each year is 300,000 candidates per year. So how are you going to stand out? So when I go around speaking to hirers who hire on cable, they tell me that they will reject people who do not fill in all their particulars on cable digital resume, as this shows your attitude and mindset. The critical part of it is the professional badges. So if you had a chance to actually download and play around with cable, you will know where professional badges are. If not, my team will walk you through later. Yeah, so if you're looking for a job on cable itself, please make sure that you fill this portion up and Find time 
to elaborate. My colleagues will be covering this session, okay? So you apply, some of you may have tried applying for jobs, you know, and um, based on the system that I've mentioned earlier, ATS, right? Your resume perhaps will never be seen by any human. So FYI, 85% of the big companies use ATS. I've shared this earlier, okay, to screen through their CV, so to make the life easier for the hirers. 70% of the time, resumes are not seen by the human eyes. So if your resume doesn't fall within the requirements of the ATS, your resume can be rejected. And on top of that, add one more hurdle, there are many types of ATS. You can read all about it in the, in, on the website, right? And all of them have got different, different requirements and see which one you pass, right? So if, um, uh, if, you, can, if you have time, do actually go to the internet and see how is it that you need to prepare your resume that passes the ATS. So this is why the reason that, you know, uh, we're having this session today and also the reason why uh, my team and I has actually built Cable System because we want to make resume or rather job searching easy for you guys. Yeah, and this is based on my 16 years of experience in the recruitment industry. So I've recruited for thousands of experience spoken to so many job seekers and also hirers and understanding their challenges and helping them to actually make the connections better. Yeah, so we will help you with the job hunting today using cable, which is super, super easy to look for a job, right? If you're familiar with Tinder, yeah, it allows you, to, we actually borrow the concept of Tinder. It allows you to swipe left or right to your potential uh, hirers in this case. Yeah, and we'll give you a few reasons also why you want to hang around this app. So first, it gives you limitless connections to your future hire matched by our AI. So you don't have to manually go to the job board, you know, search for the job, read resume, uh, read JDs, right? Let us do the heavy lifting. We make the connections happen for you so that you can only focus on branding yourself and finding the right connection with the right um potential hirer. So the hirer that we onboard on cable shares the same like-minded uh, uh, basically concept as us. They are the ones who are very willing to, you know, unlike a tip, uh, typical job description, they are very willing to share additional information to help you guys early talents to come, you know, on board into the corporate world, right? They are very willing to actually have a chat with you first to understand you as a person, understand your interests, before you take up a job. Now that's important because we want to make sure that we are onboarding the right type of people. They want to onboard the like-minded people so that you know you guys are actually sustainable and at the end not just join, you know, and perhaps gamble the time to see whether this is the right job or not. Then after that, you know, resign a couple of months later. This is not what they want. They want you guys to be sustainable and to grow your career with them. So uh, with this app, it's also built with interview questions for your future hires in case, you know, you need some, uh, they need some guidance. And for you, if you need to get some insights on, you know, the job itself, uh, when you guys are actually mutually chat, uh, um, engage on cable, you can actually launch questions there to ask suitable questions for your hires as well. So it's as simple as swipe, match and chat. Here's a clearer view of the job cards and you know you will get a point, uh, uh, you will get when you download cable, you get to know the hire's name, their position and even their profile, which will look something like your profile as well. So the concept here is to get to know your hires, like how your hires want to get to know you at the same time before you go into a more serious you know, engagement, you know, really talking about the job itself. Now you'll be able to see the hiring position the salary range, as well as the company, where's the location and all that. When you tap further into, you know, the card of the hirer, you'll be able to see, you know, information about um, the hirer themselves. And this will let you know whether, you know, is this type of uh, hirers uh, that you want to work with. Okay. On the right side is your profile. It's a digital resume where you have your background your education and the professional badges that I was talking about earlier, which is here. And when the hires actually click on your profile, this is the part that will allow them to get to know you better. So this is the part that I want really to emphasize that guys, please take time to fill this up and elaborate. It's very short. It's just a, a, 
a Twitter length. You know, I'm quite sure that all of you are actually familiar with Twitter. We don't need to elaborate too much, but just get some uh, very useful information about some of the projects that you have actually done before during your days or your schooling days and put it there. And this is how you're going to um, get the hires attracted. Okay, so before I actually go into um, uh, further crash course, I hand this over to my colleague. Please take up your phone, you know, get the cable app by just scanning this digital, uh, sorry, QR code and get started. I think that my colleagues will be able to navigate you guys better through this crash course if you have it in hand, your mobile app with you. Okay, so again, finding jobs with cable is easy. You just need to create a profile right now. If you have a chance to actually download with the QR code, create your profile right now and we will teach you how to actually discover, uh, build that profile itself and you can discover and, and pick and then straight away we will connect you with the hires that we already on board of cable. So thank you very much for your time and attention. Over to you, Zihui, on creating the profile. Thank you so much, Camelia. So guys, that was the introduction of Cable and you can actually use Cable now to start finding your internship or your first job after your internship. And this is the QR code to scan to get it on the App Store or the Google Play Store. So um, if you want to do this later, you can also take a screenshot of this um, slide right now. Okay. All right. So finding jobs with cable, it's actually very, very simple. We really simplify the way for job searching because you know, job searching is such a tedious thing. Everything has moved forward so fast to make things easier. But then for job hunting, you still have to fill in so many things on all the job portals. You know, you have to read so much, you have to prepare so much. You should because, you know, you'll be working in a job for maybe like a few years or maybe more than a few years, like the rest of your life. So it is something serious. But it shouldn't be that difficult. It shouldn't be so demotivating. Whenever people like talk about like searching for jobs and all, they're like really demotivated. So we at Cable, we are making it simpler for you. We're making it fun in a way as well so that it's more interactive and you get to connect with proper people instead of just the machine, like, you know, to go through the application tracker system and fill up so many stuff. So it's just three simple steps. The first step is obviously to create a profile. So we call it a digital resume on cable and this will help you to stand out to the hires. Then you will choose, you will discover and choose more from the recommended job cards that would be posted by the hires themselves. In, in the job cards, you'll be able to find out more about the job details and the hires background before connecting with them as mentioned by Camilla just now. But we will take a deeper view into this um, in the next few slides. Right, so just like uh, Tinder or like other matching apps, the dating apps, once the interest is mutual, the hirer swipes right on you and you swipe right on the hirer, it's a match. You can chat with the hirer using smart interview questions and this is the time and opportunity for you to hear directly from the hirer and take the chance to build connections before hiring even takes place. By connecting directly to the hirer, you stand a way better chance of getting their attention and it's easier to secure an interview. Okay, so first let's talk about creating a great profile or digital resume. This is a job seeker card, which is you. This is how your card will look like to the higher your profile. On this card, it will show your photo, your name, and all the other details when you tap into the card to expand. Take note that this is actually the first thing that the higher will see before they consider to swipe left or right on you. And first impressions really, really matter. Because you know why? Fun fact. A single glance of a person's face for just 33 to 100 milliseconds, not even one second, okay? It's enough to form a first impression. So you should always prepare yourself well. So make sure you put up your best professional looking picture. It doesn't have to be in work clothes and all that, but just make yourself look good. Your full name and credit shows as well as put up like three of your professional badges. 
Okay, so these professional badges, you can see on the right side, is also the soft skills. It's very important. It's actually one way for you to define and showcase your skills and achievements. Remember, there are like 300,000 graduates each year. So how can you stand out from the rest of the people that are applying for the same job? Everybody is a fresh graduate who has maybe like the same degree and all that and probably almost the same experience as you. So you should show your unique skills, show yourself and your experience to the hirer. This is called personal branding. And this is a very important thing that you have to learn to apply. Okay, so on the cable app, your profile is the digital resume. It's a chance for you to do personal branding. And there are only, there are a few crucial parts that I have to emphasize on for you to build your personal profile that is good and that will attract the hirer to swipe right on you. So the first thing first, like I said just now, is to share a decent picture. You need to look tidy, pleasant, and also front facing. You can't put a picture up where you are looking on the side or like you can barely see your face or it's too much filter. Remember, you have to keep it professional because you are looking for a job. And here we have a list of examples for professional badges. So you can use these badges to help yourself stand out in your own way. If you haven't thought about how to brand yourselves yet, Check out our badges because there's more than 30 professional badges for you to look at and maybe you can get an idea about what you could do with them. So here are some that are popular and you can elaborate more details on why you choose the badge based on your work and your experience from your projects, your core curriculum and even things that you do in your leisure time actually. So for the networking badge, you can see here, it's for people who connect friends to mutual groups, such as like inviting to Discord server. Maybe you get friends to join Facebook groups. Um, you know, you invite friends for many other things. You are the networking or network queen, you know, because networking is a very important thing in the working world. You may think that you don't really want to network with random people and all that. But honestly, in the working world, networking and connections is what gets you ahead. Like it or not, you need people to know you, to push yourselves forward. Because when people know you, they will think of you when maybe they have opportunities for projects, for you know businesses together in the future. So that's why if you are a social queen, social bee in college and all, consider using this badge because networking is a very, very good um, skill to have. Okay, another one is leader. So I'm sure you've known like a lot of people who are really out there, um, like for leaders of university clubs, projects, or even group projects, actually. You don't have to be the president of maybe the Interact Club, sorry, um, yeah, Rotaract Club for university level, uh, or like Leo Club and all that. You could also be just a leader for project or the groups because it depends on how you apply your knowledge and your skills here. So as a leader, you can say like what you've learned, how you've led the group of people, share why it was, you know, a success when you lead your group. People love leaders because leaders are the ones who would be able to make like impactful change and motivate people. It's great to be, you know, a good blend of a follower that you would understand um, and like connect with the leader. But at the same time, give your chance, give yourself a chance to shine and become a leader. And okay, the next batch is the award winner batch. So I think it's pretty obvious. It's for people who win awards. Maybe you go for a lot of competitions or even if you don't go for competitions, maybe you study well in school. Hey, that's actually a good thing, okay? It's not very um, easy to be on the dean's list or the president's list every semester. So you should be proud of it and flaunt it. Show the hirer that you are this material. You are good material. So competitions could include like maybe case study competitions, uh, maybe like also like art design competitions as well. So there's all these exhibitions and stuff that you can put under award winner, like you've participated and these are your like awards that you can show for the higher up. There's also Google Full Master. So I think you're like, okay, Google, everybody knows how to Google. 
Yes, everybody does know how to Google. Google is your best friend. That's why this is a good batch for those like maybe you don't have much to write. You you aren't really the networking uh, person or like a true like like very natural at leading people. But hey, Google is something that everyone can do because you need it to find research. You need it to find like answers for things like be it for assignments you know or like finding cheat sheets or guides for games as well it's actually a skill to google because even if you have google to help you and you don't know how to utilize it then it's not going to be very useful you need to find like resources that are that are you know reliable that are credible that aren't just like some fake articles online so when you are able to use Google well, you can show it to your hire that you are good at research. And with being good at research, right, you can also add it to, you can also be better at it by having Google Analytics courses. Like if you really know your way around Google, it's actually a plus point, especially like search engine optimization and all these things, SEO analytics, it's all very useful. So try to know Google in and out and it will really show how good of a researcher and how you make use of Google for the company that you want to join next time. Okay, so as a talent scout for this batch, actually, is for people who find good team players and, you know, to join in their teams for group projects, sports team, anything. So I'm sure you guys have heard of group projects are a horror in college and yes it is horrible but at the same time you get to know like these are the people that you potentially work with next time you know so like you like it or not they will graduate they will get a job like maybe they do a good job next time or something but you know you need to know you need to see what type of person like the person are the people are to get them to join your team when you want these people to join your team you need to be able to scout them out sometimes right you know like even though it's all online now you'll be like oh for this team i need need five people i need to get someone who can edit video i need to get someone who can proofread well i need to get someone who you know can do very good research i need to get someone who can support me okay so sometimes it's not just choosing friends to join your group projects it's choosing the right people to help you like get the best out of the group project so you would be a talent scout at this so this is kind of relatable to becoming like a talent acquisition uh, or like the headhunter role so you see all these badges it kind of relates to your college or even your high school life even though you don't have much going on, you can have something because something that you do in your everyday life, you just don't know how to make use of it. So yeah, these are the few examples. Okay, so you've got your profile settled all and now and you know, you're good to go. You are very confident to show the job, like the hire, like, you know, choose me, swipe right. Okay, so next you will get to pick your job cards and this is where you can see the job details as well as the hirer's background. Okay, we make things super easy for you. Instead of long-winded job descriptions and jargons that you may not even understand, since you know, you're a fresh grad or an intern, we get our hirers to simplify their job descriptions to put the most important things first for you to understand and know more about the job. So for example, they will state out their to-do list. You can see her to-do list item one. What is the major objective or biggest challenge of the job? Develop, implement, and monitor strategic marketing plans to onboard job seekers on cable app. You know, you can let you know the major challenges and you know what would be expected of you so that it's way clearer. I'm not sure how many of you do it, but it's always good to know the hirer before an interview. So on cable, we help you out with this part. The hires profile is actually just right there. You can tap into it to get to know more about them. The recruitment process has been taken over by, you know, systems and machines. So we try to bring back the elements, the human elements. At the end of the day, it's one human working with another human. So it's important to have personality. You can get to know your um, hire better so like during the interview you can connect with them maybe both of you uh, actually like 
the hobby, maybe both of you like baking and all. So like, you know, they might ask you what you do in your free time and you can connect. So humans love to connect with people. Humans love to relate. When they are able, when they are relatable to someone else, then they are more likely to look at that person more to consider that person. This is, you know, something that is not stated out there, but like it's actually, it actually helps. I had a friend who went for an interview um, for a job and she actually was a national Scrabble player um, winner. She won uh, during one of the years in high school. So she put it under one of her achievements. And then she found out during the interview that the interviewer actually loves playing Scrabble. And a lot of people will be like, Scrabble, that's such an odd thing to like to play. It's so old school. That's, you know, a board game that's like last time people play on. But, you know, there are people who have interest in this. And when they find other people who are interested in the same thing as them, my friend told me the interviewer got very excited and the interviewer immediately wanted to, you know, get to know her even more and like get her on board. And, you know, after that, of course, she did other interviews and assessments. She got the job because people relate to her. People, people like what they see, like they, they, they feel like they are their person that, that, and they will fit well with the team. Okay, so it's very important to understand the job that you apply to. If you do not know what is expected of you, how can you even perform and be successful in your role? If you don't know what, yeah, job descriptions are usually very general, even though they are long. Sometimes they're copy pasted from one website to another website and they don't keep it updated. So you don't even get to do what you think you will be doing. And you have to ask very specific questions to dig more information. These are some of the questions that you must ask for every job that you apply to. And some of it is like the major objective and biggest challenge. What does the person need to do to become successful for the job and what needs to be done as soon as possible? Don't wait until you accepted the offer, um, started the job, and then you realize like maybe one month in like, oh no, this is really not what you want. Like it's very bad at that point, you know, you would have to work first. So it's better to ask now during the interview stage, getting to know the hirer, um, better to ask now than to regret later. On cable, hires usually answer these questions by default, as I mentioned in the to-do list just now, to let you know about the job details. So you can evaluate straight on the spot, like if the job is right for you or not. Okay, once you and the hire swipe right on each other, you go into chatting. And the chatting will look a bit like this on the left side. Again, a lot of mismatch of expectations happen when there is a lack of opportunity to understand the role first before signing up for the job. This happens because the current job application approach does not provide a platform for job seekers, especially for inexperienced ones like interns and fresh grads to ask the right questions. They have no one to refer to because not everybody follows the same steps as their parents. You know, like maybe the parent was in logistics, but now you're going into creatives. You can't exactly ask your parents for that. And you could maybe ask a mentor at school or something but there are so many students, they don't have time for you sometimes and you don't know who to refer to. So you really need to ask the questions. Okay, so it's fine. I get it. I was shy and nervous, even though I prepared a lot. Like, yeah, the moment I had to speak to the hirer, I totally blanked out. And that's the worst thing that can happen during an interview stage with the hirer because it's not who you are, you know. We know like you could be better than that. It was just, you know, nervousness at that moment and suddenly you're scared and it's just unfortunate because you have to keep remembering to become, uh, to be polite and you be afraid to ask the wrong questions because it's your first time. But let me tell you this, hirers are so, so like in love when you ask the questions and the secret is asking the right questions. Okay. To them, it's a genuine, it's a display of genuine interest and it gives the impression that you're interested in knowing more about the company and the job, that like you're serious about it. Asking smart questions will make them think that you're motivated to do the job and it's a very important factor. 
think from the hire's perspective. When they post up a job looking to hire, obviously, they need to look for someone who will be able to help them solve their problems at work. In the working world, it's always about solving problems. So they want to hire someone who is motivated and like a problem solver uh, instead of someone who isn't. So ask questions, but the right one. Okay, so during interview questions, you might always ask like, you, you might always prepare three questions that you will ask for every single interview. Every interview, you ask like the same three questions. It's good to have questions prepared beforehand, but when you prepare the same questions for all the interviews, you have to make sure that it makes sense because sometimes the three questions that you prepare for the same for the interviews it may already have the information in the job description so you may not you know show your interest properly because they might see that you did not check and read the job description properly before you ask them the question you didn't do your research properly and sometimes even though uh like during the interview, as it goes on, you need to know how to adapt because sometimes they would be able to tell you what you want to know from your question during the interview. So you need to be attentive and make sure you understand during the interview what the hirer is trying to say to you so that you don't ask the same question that he technically already answered somewhere along in the interview. So here are some smart questions that you can ask in an interview or in the chat function in Cable. What are the key objectives or main priorities of the job? Biggest challenges, immediate problems that need to be addressed. Immediate problems is something that is good like for you to know. So this is important. And what is the team structure like? What's the culture, what work culture at the company? What division will you be working closely with? Because in the working world, everything is interrelated. So sometimes when you work in the marketing department, you may have to work together with the finance department. You know, there's a connection there because you need fundings to get your marketing things up ahead and so on. So that's why you would be working with different divisions. Even though you didn't study it, you may have to learn stuff about it to further understand and make it like better during the working, uh, working world. Yeah. So uh, another one is, does this role require to, me to travel frequently? Because as fresh grads, like I think majority do not have their own cars to drive yet. Some may depend on public transportation or their parents to send them to work. So if the role requires you to travel, then maybe um, try another role because it would be very um, difficult for you to do that inconvenient. And of course, the career prospects of the position. You need to show that you are someone who strives, who has like a five-year plan. Like you don't want to be stuck in the same position for three years straight or something like that. You need to continue to build your career through the company. Okay, so after you know all this question, it's actually an opportunity to show off your soft skills. Although it doesn't look like a casual chat, you know, it looks like WhatsApp or something like that. You have to remember that you are talking to your future employer. When you are talking to your future employer, you need to be able to communicate and have a good attitude that can be reflected as you chat with them. When you chat with people, right, you can actually tell a lot from the way they type, from the way they respond, their questions and all that. And besides that, you can also check out if the hirer is the one that you want to work with you know, because you can see how the hirer talks to you as well. Look out for leaders who are willing to help you, to develop you in the working world. So you can just woe them by asking these questions that I mentioned here. So after the questions, like, you know, you both are happy with each other, you can continue to the video chat, which is also available on our app itself. And um, you can also schedule appointments if you want to meet in real life as well. But sometimes, especially after the pandemic, a lot of interviews are done online. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't prepare for your interview, for a physical interview with the hirer, okay? And my colleague will talk more about that later. Okay, while chatting with the, with the hirer can be exciting for some people, it can also be very nerve 
nerve-wracking, you know, so it's totally okay. But please know that the hires also feel the same way sometimes because like chat, chat interview is something new for them. It's a new concept that needs to be changed because it's very important for both sides to know about the, you know, the candidate and the job, like to be aligned to accept the person. So on the hirer side, they should be prepared to answer more questions because during an interview is always two way. It's not just one side, the one sided where the interviewer keeps asking you questions for you to keep answering because it's an exchange of information. So this way, there is no reason for both sides to say that I didn't know. And when something goes wrong, you know, during your internship or your first job. So here's how to ace an interview on cable, like, you know, do the good do read through the job card and evaluate the vision properly, check if you like the mission of the company, what the company stands for before you swipe right. You cannot simply swipe right because it's a job application, okay? Unlike, just the difference, unlike dating apps, you can swipe right to how many and try your luck, you know, with different people. That's more social and, you know, like in your casual time that you can do that. So that's why you need to think properly before you swipe right. Don't just swipe right on all the companies, the hirers that have the job cut out for you. It would be wasting your time and their time as well. And once you have matched, be proactive, do a warm introduction, be nice, say hello and use your elevator pitch. You should be the first person to actually, um, you know, start the chat because you, at the end of the day, you are still the job seeker and you need to prove to them like you are the best candidate for the job. So start, don't be afraid to start the chat first. And when you start the chat, be prepared, you know, because you are going to be telling the, the hirer about you. So you need to prepare like three unique points about the company that, or the position that appeals to you. Why do you resonate so well with it? And prepare three points of how you, and contribute to the company or position. Like I said, the good interview is you talking more because you are also a job. You are the candidate. So 60 to 70% of the time, you have to be the one talking. Okay. So you can ask job related questions to show interest and initiative. That's what I mentioned just now during uh, smart questions and also be timely in your response. Okay. So unlike your friends, maybe you can go like one whole day or one week with not replying them. You need to reply the hirers in a timely manner because they are busy with their job. So if you're not going to be serious about it, don't swipe right because it will waste both people's time because they will be asking you questions, but no reply from your side. And can you guess like what's the most important tip from this to ace an interview actually? Don't ghost. You don't like to be ghosted by other people. The same goes, don't ghost the future employer. So like whether you want the job or not, or you got rejected or, or you already accepted a different job, you need to give a response. Let them know, you know, let them know. I'm so sorry. It was really nice talking to you and like getting to know about you and your company. But I have decided that I will be going through with another job offer that I received. Uh, maybe we can have, uh, you know, we can be connected so that we could work together in the future if, you know, it allows. So say thank you. Be polite, be gracious, don't burn bridges. The corporate world, the working world actually, is very small. And remember, you need network and connection to get ahead. So you never know when you will meet the person again. And let's say you just ghost them or like, uh, sorry, I don't want this job already. Like you're quite rude to them. You meet them again, they're going to remember that and you are not going to get the opportunity in the future. So always leave a good impression and that is how you expand your network positively. And of course, if you found a job already, remember to put yourself as undiscoverable so that you don't have to ghost people. You can still see job cards, but then they won't be able to see you. So, you know, you would prevent like them having to expect that you will show up like in the job cards, uh, sorry, in the hires cards. Okay, so I will pass the time now to Esther, who will continue with like 
additional tips on what hires really want from you. And this is when you are meeting the hirer directly in real life. Okay. Over to you, Esther. Thank you, Zui. Yeah, my name is Esther and I'll be going through with you about, you know, what hires really want from, from you, right? Most often, right, when you apply for a job, you may think that, okay, this is my resume. This is what I am and these are the skills that I have, right? Hire me. But have you thought about what hires really want? Maybe not, right? So here are some tips for you, not only from hires on cable, but in general, most hires out there. Lah. Yeah, so the first thing that they really want from you is you, they want you to be proactive and show interest. You know, employers are really busy people. So they want somebody who take initiative to do things, not somebody who just sit around, wait to be told what to do, right? So the first thing you can do to show that you are proactive and um, you're interested in the job during your interview is um, you do research about the job, right? At the minimum, right, when you are doing research about the job, you should understand about the company, the company mission, the vision, recent company news, recent uh, market news, maybe the background of your hirer, right? Like you always say, get to know the hirer, yeah? The background or other interviewers, yeah? So make sure you do minimal research about this. They can really tell if you have done any research or not before meeting them. And it actually shows that you are interested in the role, right? How do you show that you have done the research? Based on the research, you ask questions, right? Ask smart questions, not just any questions. Don't ask questions like, oh, what does the company do? You should have done your research, right? Why, do you, why are you asking me this? Or you ask questions like, what is this job about? Ah? Oh, you should have read the description, the job description at least. This is too general, right? So say something like, you know, what Sihui has mentioned in the smart interview, uh, smart interview question just now. You know, ask something like, oh, oh, I read that this job requires me to do this, this, this. So what is the biggest challenge of the role? Yeah, so ask something that you know, show that you have done the research, you have read about it, but you are not really clear, you want to clarify. So, or you can also use the smart questions in our app, of course. Yeah, so they can really tell if you have done your research or, you know, based on the question you ask, it really shows that whether you are interested in the role and they want somebody who is interested in the job, right? Next. Okay, second, second point is they are looking for somebody who understand uh, their strengths. So when you know what you're good at, you need to apply that in your work and showcase it, right? So during an interview, how do you show that you understand your strength? They probably will ask you, um, what is your strength or your weaknesses, right? It's not enough if you just say that, oh, this is my strength and this is my weakness. You need to show that you understand your strength and how you use it to your advantage, right? One way to use, one way is you use examples like, okay, this is my strength and this strength actually match what they're looking for. It's not, ex it's not to use like, or just any strength that you have, then you just say it out and without relating back to the job. Yeah, so try to explain your skills to match what they're really looking for. It's important to, for you to communicate your value as well, because you know, how, you, how valuable are you to, to the hirer? What can you contribute based on the strengths that you have? Right. Tell them how that you are. Um, tell them how you are an asset to the company. What you can contribute based on the skills that you have, and able to help them get results. So the thing is, you know, when hires are, you know, they are hiring people. They are looking for somebody who can help them solve problem. So how can you use your skills to help them solve solve the problem? This will, if let's say you can, you know, say how you can use your skills to help them solve this is problem that will make you differentiate yourself from other, other candidates out there. Yeah. So next point. Yeah. So the last thing we'll focus on is somebody, they want somebody who is motivated to learn and also contribute. So when you're looking for your internship or your first job, right, you probably have zero working experience. That's why you're looking for a job. Normal, right? <laughs> Yeah, so hires they understand that, but what you need to do is to show that you are really willing to learn and to contribute, like mentioned. 
how do you use your skills to contribute, right? You need to show that you're willing to learn and contribute. They will always prefer somebody who is willing to learn, eager to learn and expand their knowledge over somebody who probably don't show much interest, don't show that they are willing to learn, very comfortable. So because, you know, in life, you will always need to learn things along and you don't limit yourself. So you need to show that. So during the interview, how you can show that you're willing to learn is, you know, you can describe challenges that you have faced and then, you know, whether it's in your project or your curriculum activities, what are the challenges you have faced and how you manage to overcome them and also what you have learned, right? Then after that, even better if you can connect the dots of what you have learned to how you can apply this in the position that you are, you are applying for, right? Connecting the dots is very important because um, like just now Siri has mentioned, probably you have a lot of skills that you have gained from your projects or your co-curriculum activities or even during your free time, right? You have to know how to use this experience or the skills to, you know, help you um, connect the dots and apply them in the job that you're applying for, right? Learn how to brand yourself based on the skills that you have done and communicate the value that you can contribute to the company. Yeah. So next, we are looking at, um, these are the comments uh, by HR practitioners or HR leaders uh, from you know, our pool of hires. So this is what they usually look for when they hire fast graduates. You know, I will just quickly go through right, um, um, some of the points. The first one is uh, the head of, head of HR from Lala Move. So they say that um, since graduates don't have real world experience besides internship, and curriculum activities. Uh, besides internship, I look for curriculum activities and volunteering work with NGOs. So this gives me an idea if the person is a team player or has good social skills, right? So yeah, so probably what you need to do is to understand, you know, do, like say, what are the challenges face or what are the things that you have learned from your curriculum activities or your work, then show that you're a team player and good social, you have good social skills. So the one on the bottom left, yeah, in a sea of fresh graduates, be an individual and showcase yourself relating to what you have graduated for. So personality plus degree equals value to your company. So like you say, right, there are 300,000 graduates out there. How do you differentiate yourself? It's by adding personality to what you do. So it's good that you, if you know your strengths and everything, but you can also bring your personality into you know, work. Because that is what that is different from that makes you different from others. Right? The top right one. So from HR director from MCOR Flexibles. Yeah. So she said that I pay attention to keywords such as teamwork, collaboration, and prior work experience, such as internship. LinkedIn branding is a good strategy to get yourself stand out among other applicants. So, like I say, personal branding is really important to help you stand out. Then the last one is, I look for extracurricular activities. How active is the person outside of academics and internship attended and learnings obtained. Again, learnings obtained, right? Finally, good grades and good school is a given because a lot of graduates out there probably come from a good, have good grades, CGPA more, more than 3.5, and they probably come from a good school as well. A degree is a given. So what you need to do is stand out, learn to brand yourself, stand out among other people, yeah. So the next one is, sorry, yeah, yeah just uh, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. You can apply to hundreds of jobs, but if you don't have the right plan, no matter how good you are or how, how much skills that you have, it's very hard to win the game. So just like talk of war, la, if, you, if you just apply pure strength, you cannot win the game. You, have, you must have the right strategy. You, know, you, you must learn the right strategy of you know, job hunting and learn how to stand out. To and then execute the strategy. Yeah. So these are just some of the reasons why um, you will love cable. Firstly, it's AI powered job matching. So we recommend you jobs instead of you looking for it. And the second point is um, can reach out to hires directly. So instead of you know just clicking apply button on job portals, you know, then you don't really hear from who are the hires. Cable allows you to reach out to them, chat with them to understand more about the job. Yeah. So the thing is, of course, you stand out with a personalized profile. 
and then it's also interactive and responsive so you can really chat with each other and also communicate values your vision your expectation before even getting hired yeah so next is of course we have easy to use interview guides like the smart interview questions that will really help you to you know ask the smart questions yeah and lastly we have, cable is built for people to share goals values and also uh, visions yeah so we are more about you know communicating instead of you know just looking at a um, job description or, or paperwork so we encourage people to communicate before even getting into working together for the next few years yeah so yep stay tuned next one sorry yeah so yeah stay tuned for session tomorrow we have a spotlight session highlighting two hiring companies as you can see there there's, there are like two small logos at the bottom one is cop art and craft co and one is a uh, hot shoe show tomorrow at 10 a.m same time as today so just a little bit background uh. so cop art and craft co is a family owned and also operated business they have been pursuing the fine art of timber craftsmanship since 1981 yeah on the other hand, the Hot Shoe Show and Co is a company that specializes in strategic events, communications, and also destination management. Yeah. So if you're interested, you know, don't miss out. Join the session tomorrow and hear from um, the hirers themselves um, to see you know, what the company is about. They also offer some job opportunities that you can um, apply on cable as well. Yeah. Yep. That's about it <laughs> okay so i hope you are ready to use cable to um, look for your internship and first job and we are now in the q a session so just feel free to type in the chat or raise your hand to ask questions okay for q a sessions we have a few questions uh, from the audience so number one is from jade so the question is certain recruiters will ask the a job seeker to pitch themselves in limited words how do we write a short and simple pitch? So how do we answer these questions? Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I believe that this is like what we say about, you know, elevator pitch is when, you know, elevator pitch come from the word that, you know, when you're in an elevator with somebody, how do you introduce yourself? Yeah, so, you know, in probably like less than 60 seconds or 30 seconds, how do you introduce yourself, make it short and concise enough to make the other person interested to speak to you further, right? So elevator pitch, basically, you can actually, you know, craft it in a way that, you know, it shows like past, present and future to, to make it simpler for you to, to understand the structure, like past, present and future. So past is, you know, what experience do you have? Present is, you know, what um, what do you do now? And then future is what are you looking for? So basically, you can actually start with, you know, this is my name and I, I currently am studying in, you know, uh, University of Science Malaysia in School of Arts, right? I am specialized in probably design and this is what I do. Yeah, then after that, you say that, okay, I'm looking for uh, a role in probably uh, to in digital marketing example yeah to to further expand my skills and also apply this yeah just a short introduction of you know what what do you do and then what what experience do you have and also what you are looking for if i may add on so like for an example let's say you like to travel you like yeah. to write think about it what can you do if you like to travel and you can write so let's say, um, hi, my name is this, and I am the final year student at USM, and I love traveling. That is my hobby. Because I love traveling, and I go to so many nice places, right? And maybe not just traveling, maybe cafe hop uh, hopping. I actually started a IG account 
for all my hopping uh, cafe hopping adventures i rate them so that is actually a bit like your portfolio you'll be able to share what you can do so in those 30 seconds you can ask them to check out maybe your instagram or your blog where you write and promote about the things that you do it's also your passion it shows like what you enjoy and what you would bring to the table for them then you can say at the end uh maybe something like this would be suitable for like so i am interested in the copywriting role the junior copywriting role of your company that I see that you have an opening for. So that's an elevated pitch that would get straight to the point uh, and with relevant information for the higher when they ask for, tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah. 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 So always relate your skills or your experience back to the job that you're applying for. So if the recruiter, you're applying for, for example, the copywriting role, then you say something that's related that you've done in the past. Yeah, to, to say that, okay, this is what I can do and yeah, this is what I can do, contribute to the company. Okay. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, Jade. Yeah. Okay, so the next question is uh, from Shikin. What are the difference between cable from other jobs ads and additional advantage available in cable? As well as known, cable is a user application. Does Cable have a feature plan in doing website platform? Um, how Cable is different generally is the, uh, it's a more interactive and, and uh, creative way of looking for a job. You know, normally when you look for a job, you know, you go to the job uh, portal and then you look at the job description, it's so long, so lengthy, you don't really understand what is it for, what, what's the role about. And you click apply and then you wait like uh, probably a few weeks for the hires to get back to you. So on cable, what we do is, you know, once you sign up a profile and then um, we will give you recommended job instead. So example, if you are studying uh, in creative. So once you put your degree in uh, the um, creative, then we will recommend you relevant uh, jobs to your background, to your degree. Yeah, so you don't have to wonder like, hmm. I graduated in this, what can I do with my degree? Then you go and do your own research and yeah. So what we do is we give you recommended uh, jobs rather than you looking out for it. And then after that, it's of course the, you know, like, the t like how Tinder works, right? We, after you swipe left or you swipe right, you know, then after that we match based on both you and the higher swipe right. Yeah. So once you swipe right, both swipe right on each other, then we match you and you can go into chatting. So we, Kind of like change the whole process of you know just everything paperwork into doing the filtering for cable does the filtering for you so you can go straight into conversation and understand about the job or the hire more before you you go ahead yeah so what's the other question again <laughs> the the web the web one right uh yeah uh, yeah so, yeah <laughs> yes, yes. So currently, cable is only available on mobile phone, the mobile mobile app. But in the future, we also plan to do web. Yeah, it's it's in the plan. But uh, yeah, we still we we'll see how it goes. Because currently, a lot of people are using all on mobile phones, especially young people like us. <laughs> It's really easier to, to look for a job and not just, you know, stuck in front of the computer looking yeah. at, you know, at the computer <laughs> yeah. screen, right? You can do it any, with, with the mobile phone, you can do it anywhere, anytime, even when you're out with your friends, you know, yeah. Just reply a few texts, yeah, reply the chat, you know, so, so to be constant communication with the, with the job hunting process instead of, you know, just setting aside a time and do the job hunting. Yeah. So if I may add, uh, basically that's a very good question. I'd like to also deep dive more. Um, so the whole concept is about you know finding the finding job on the go, right? But usually the web based uh, application question usually come from the higher side because they day in day out they are specializing in talent position, right? So they actually sit down and have to actually read couple many 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 many, many profiles, right? But it's interesting that it comes from the, the floor of the students and the fresh grads. So I'd like to find out um, whoever that asked that question, 
is there a reason why uh, you see that there is a need to ha actually have a web base? And that's a very interesting question that we like to find out because at the end of the day, we want to build something which is easy for you. I mean, our role here is basically to enable you guys to actually get to your job faster, right? But if you feel that having a web base is actually faster and easier for you, let, please let us know why. I mean, what was the nature of that question? If you don't mind. Can, uh, can feel free to just uh, type in the chat box as well. I think uh, if I may to add on, I think for the audience, uh, audience perspective is that uh, they are so used to applying jobs application through websites and through, we can see from the news and everything. So it's like, it's a, it's like an old mindset kind of thing. But maybe for them, it's like we're, uh, having a website platform can make it every, can make it easier. So I guess it's in that way. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. Okay, that's why that's where we actually wanted to introduce the new way of doing things so that it's easier. Doesn't really need to tie you up, you know, on your chair for a couple of hours, you know, and and just to apply the job. So whenever that there is somebody matching to you, and while you're having a coffee chat, you know, at a cafe or something, and hanging out with your friends. There's somebody who actually, know, you know, uh, swipe right on you, it will notify you as well. Or whenever that you're waiting, you know, at the cafe for your friend, just open up the cable app and start scrolling about, you know, uh, on jobs. And in the future, there will be also, you know, insights about the uh, uh, jobs, the industry and whatnot that, you know, it's a reading material, it's a one-stop solution for you guys to actually go into, you know, find out a little bit more about, you know, what career development means. Yeah. So, but that's the future. For now, the feature is that we connect you with the hiring manager first. Our team here is working very hard on to establishing that insights portion of it, the feature of it. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. Thank you. Thank you so much for the answers. Uh, so now we have questions from Facebook. So the question is how to define a smart question and how can we answer the question in a more smart way? And Second question is every, every time almost coming to end of sessions of interview, they will ask us, did anything you want from us? Did it have any insight meaning? So this question is from Chong Li Pin. Thanks for the question, Chong Li Pin. Okay, maybe I just go through one by one. How do what is a smart question, right? Okay, so this is this is actually quite subjective, but as long as Chong if you have actually done your research just based on company website, looking into their vision, mission, and you understand that their products, you will actually eventually know how to ask the smart question, right? Means you would have some background before you just think about any, any questions at all. Yeah, so the, the idea here is not to think about. You will, I mean, we all are, we all are capable of actually reading from website. Okay, so that's that's one way. Uh, if all fails, again, you know, launch the question in the in, coming from the app. It's a guided question anyway. But from there, please make sure that you are actually communicating according to the two-way response, right? So the guided question here is not for you to just launch it and then just wait for the for the hire to reply, launch, and then it has to have a connection. Lah. It has got to do, you know, a, a two way and it's supposed to be relevant and a continuous conversation. Yeah, so that's that's the cue. And like what my colleagues say, most of the time, it will be 70% of the time you are talking, right? But if you feel that the hire is a little bit quiet, you're not sure whether you're actually asked, you're not, you're not blabbering away something which is not relevant. Again, launch another question and ask them like, oh, does this fit into, you know, the plan or what, what is the future plan in the next six months to one year? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so that's the, that's, that's the asking smart question. The final one was, sorry, what was the question again? The final one? Uh, the final one he asked about every time almost coming in end of, end of the uh, sessions of the interview, they will ask us, did anything you want from us? Is anything that you want from us? Um, uh, did it that does it have any uh, insight meaning to it? 
Ah, uh, okay. Uh, it's a very smart question. Uh, that could be a trick question from the hirer, actually. So, hirers really want to know whether you are interested on the job and how interested you are. So, preparing the right questions is also the key, right? If you just go in there to just wait for questions and, and then you answer one-liner, question one-liner, before having you know, and anything to ask about, it just basically shows your interest and your motivation to join them. Right? So prepare some questions towards the end of the interview and then ask them. But the questions is, uh, again, it's about the smart question, lah, about future plans normally, about finding out about more about the team, finding out about, you know, what your role is and what kind of impact that you would, you can make and things like that. Yeah? Um, Zuhui and uh, Esther, anything else to add for, apart from that? Um, I, think he, I think he asked also about how to answer questions. Yeah, how to answer questions. Um, we didn't go through this uh, during our uh, presentation, but um, you can actually use the STAR method. So the STAR method is, it means situation, task, action, and results. Yeah, so situation is basically for this for this question is normally uh, a lot of questions you can use with this method, uh, such as, you know, um, tell me about your your the projects that you have done or tell me that um, the challenge that you have faced. Yeah, so you can what is star right situation. So what was the situation that you were given? So what was the situation that you faced? Task, that means what was the task that was given to you or what, what was your responsibility? Action, that means what do you do? What action do you take? And the results, R is results. So what was the outcome? What was the results that you have achieved? Yeah, so this is a more structured way of answering um, some of these questions la, to describe your challenges and you know, what was the result and how, what you have learned then relate it back to the, the, the role or the relate, relate it back to the positions that you're looking for. Yeah. So example, maybe I give an example. Uh, the first one, the S, right? Yeah, so I was, uh, I was the president for the, so, um, the Rotaract Club or whatever, right? I was the president for this club. And I was uh, tasked to do, uh, do an event and motivate 100 people to join this event. And then what was the action you, I took, right? The one, um, I did a fundraising, we did a fundraising uh, by asking our members to do a painting, uh, painting uh, class, right? What was the results? So we successfully raised 2,000 ringgit. And also I learned valuable skills such as this is this. And that was the result. Yeah, so this is a more structured way for you to answer questions, generally questions like this, and then after that you relate it back to the role that they are looking for. Yeah. All right, thank you, Ms. Camilla and Esther. I hope Chong can get the answer and have something work on with that answers, yeah? So now we have next question from Aisha. So what if we have been ghosted by the company and do we have time frame for them to respond to us? Another good question, Aisha. I think um, following up is also a showing of motivation as well. Time for them to respond to us. Yeah, so uh, perhaps a good timing to actually follow up after you have kind of like, you know, met the uh, met the interviewer sometimes it sounded like you know it's positive but then you sit a couple of days and then it's like you know you're really excited about a job but how come there's no response right so give them a time frame of like maybe a week or so right and write them an email so always remember after your interview try to get away to how you can actually uh, get back to them so you may ask them like you know can i uh for the purpose of actually following up can i have your email please right after your interview. Make sure that you keep that, you know, uh, that email and then give it about, you know, uh, seven to 10 working days. That would be a good gauge. And then write to them again. Sometimes it could be genuine that they forgotten about it because just to give you an insight, any recruiter in uh, an organization, easily they handle like 20 over to 30 positions at one go at different stages and different, different, you know, uh, different positions. 
So sometimes if the organization skills are not that thorough, right, they will actually miss out. So it's good to actually give them, you know, a follow up email. Seven to ten days. That will be very good. Thanks for the question. Aisha, I hope that helps. I may add on. Another good thing that you can do is after the interview, you got the email address already, right? Send them immediately. Thank you for the interview. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. So like you make an impression and you follow up directly with them. This is immediate. You don't have to say much. Just say thank you. And you know, at least you're in their inbox. So after that, you can follow up with that email, like with what um, Camelia said also. So then it will show that you're really interested and you can follow up easily because they would be like, oh, this girl emailed me right after the interview, right? She was the one who was very interested to get to know us and all that. So that's another good thing for um, high, uh, good thing for students or fresh grads to do also to practice doing. Yeah, I hope that answers the question. Thank you for the answers, Aisha. I hope it helps too, yeah, Aisha. So I have a question from my end. So as a job platform, does have a strong LinkedIn profile plays a big role in hiring? Uh, that is definitely a yes. I mean, LinkedIn today is has got the biggest, largest data pool of all corporate professionals, mostly. Right, so that is the place where you can actually shout out your brand. That's also the place where you can actually network, or that's a place where recruiters are now commonly tapping and you know writing to you, right? So, but you need to basically decorate that profile, right? And then you got to basically make sure that you update it constantly, lah, right? Because there's a lot of people actually doing the similar thing. So in order to actually stand out in that space. Um, it can be um, basically uh, time consuming, I would say, right? Time consuming, but it's definitely worth it. Uh, at least if it's not for the purpose of uh, networking or, or being recruited, uh, that is the place where you can showcase your stuff, right? And so when, when recruiters actually receive your resume, the next thing that they do is that they will suss you out. Not, I mean, LinkedIn is the main main page and FYI, they also suss you out in other pages as well. Instagram, your, well, I think TikTok, maybe not yet, but you know, we, we don't know. Uh, nowadays that it's getting younger and younger and TikTok seems to be appealing to you all. So Insta, if you have Facebook, you know, um, so um, yeah, so please make sure that you are actually putting up appropriate stuff. Uh, sometimes it could happen that, you know, uh, they may pick up something which is not what is uh, synced to their, the company's corporate image and that may be, you know, quite, uh, 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 it will reduce the chance of you actually getting contacted. Yeah, so if you don't want those to be seen, just make sure that you adjust your privacy. But LinkedIn, you cannot adjust your privacy. You put it up already, that's what they see. Yeah, so LinkedIn is important. All right, thank you, Ms. Camellia. So I think we can have uh, one last question before we wrap it all up uh, from the audience. Is there any more questions that everyone, anyone want to ask? Just want to add on, I think as creative students, it's very important to have a portfolio and that the that the employer can future employer can see. So even though on LinkedIn, like they share a lot of posts and like what they've done and all that, you can actually share pictures as well. You can share videos of what you've done and even a link to a website resume that you made, maybe like a simple one that can showcase everything that you have designed before and participated in. So as creative student, you really show your experience and also what you can bring to the table for the company as well. So remember like, a degree is honestly like a passport to enter into the working world. 
don't worry if you are scared that, you know, you found out that after that, you don't really want to do this for your entire life. There's always time to like change careers. And you at the first few years of your career, you just have to discover what you like to do and like make a living out of it. If you don't like it, you can change it like along the way. It's a self-discovery thing so like take your time at the beginning don't be frustrated you can pull through it like a lot of people are still lost when they come out into the working world it doesn't mean that you choose to study this you're going to die die stick in this um degree like within this field you know like in the brochure they will be like oh if you do this degree you will get to do these few jobs it's not just those few jobs you will get connections, you will grow as a person, you will get more knowledge and you'll be able to do other things as well that maybe you would like to do next time. So yeah, don't be afraid about that. And um, do you have, do you have like the one more question? Oh yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Camelia. Okay, no, we, no, have, go ahead. Uh, we, we have like a last minute questions here. So okay. as of, uh, from Aisha, yeah, yeah. As a fresh graduate, graduate, our profile is not much. And do we need to do, do we need to do my own work and post them? Mm, as a fresh graduate, I actually graduated the last year or so. And during the pandemic, I didn't do much. So like the recent stuff, I don't, I didn't have much or so. So I feel like as a fresh graduate, you don't have to purposely like post something, do something like start Instagram shop girl or something like that. But you can bring back like your experience of what you've done during college and all. And if you don't have the experience, like I mentioned, like group projects and stuff like that, confirm got do right uh, during your college work, you can put that up as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I have like one question for this part. Um, uh, as a job platform recruiter, right? Uh, is it suitable to ask for how much salary as a fresh graduate should get? Yeah, <laughs> we discussed about the salary and everything. So at what point, at what salary uh, rich that we should go for, ask for? Million dollar question, right? <laughs> yes. Question. Yeah, and that's very important, I'm quite sure. Well, there is always a guideline out there, you know, about what, how much fresh grad is supposed to be paid. Okay. Um, but the good news is that uh, you don't really have to ask when you actually are on board on cable because we have actually done that matching for you. So what you need to do is put in your expectation in there. But you must know, you go and do your studies, ask around your friends who have gotten a job and whatnot. Ask them, hey, can share a bit, uh, tolong a bit, you know, what's the range that, you know, you guys uh, are being paid so you roughly get a gauge. Check it on the, you know, on, on the internet and see if that's the correct gauge so that when you put in into cable, we will help you match those, that, those uh, positions that are willing to pay about that range so that on cable, you do not need to ask that very, I don't know, you call it awkward question, million dollar question or whatsoever. So that's how we actually design it to help you guys. But should you actually not be um, using cable and using other methods of actually recruitment, any recruitment portal, remember this, it's okay to ask, but be polite about it. But the majority of the thing is that you need to pay a lot of, or put in a lot of effort into branding yourself, making them know that this is what my specialty is. But if you're not sure, that's fine. Your personality and your character is very important, right? Being able to communicate well, uh, not super, you know, super fluent. That's, that's fine, actually. But they can see you putting your effort in, your research, your ability to want to try, your hunger, you know, your uh, being just polite and professional about things. You follow up your systematic and things like that. Those are all the soft skills and the characters that an, a future employer actually wants to see during the interview, right? So that's more important to actually highlight uh, rather than, you know, asking the pay. So how I would suggest that, you know, if you really, really need to find out, 
okay, you, you may say things like that. So um, you can say, Miss Camellia, now that we have actually completed the interview and you have known, you know, some of my strengths, some of the some of my passion and the things that I possibly could contribute to your organization. Um, my friends out there are saying that, you know, the fresh grad pays is about this range to this range, you know, maybe about 2000 to 2000. I'm not sure whether this is, this fits right into your company's budget. Uh, I believe that you'll be able to actually come up with an interesting one and let future like that without committing and without also you know, sounding like you really die, die need to get that. Cannot be desperate, right? It's also like in a relationship, right? In your girlfriend, boyfriend thing, right? Kalau you, you, you sell it like you are so desperate, right? You're, you're going to scare people away, right? So just need to be tactful about it. So don't, don't need to commit also, but also you, when you try to find out, just give a range. A range will be good, right? My friends are telling me that it's about two to three thousand, but toka. You know, you can say you can say stuff like that, right? To ease it in, and then see lah whether the person open or not. if the person is open about it, maybe he really likes you know what you have actually said during the earlier part of the interview, which is the part that you need to highlight. Then they will start to open up, and then they will start to sell you the job. Ah, uh, then life will be much easier. They are selling you the job right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the You're answer. Welcome, so there's another question here, last by uh, by Jade. So the question is, do cable check resumes or CV so that we can improve in the resume? Ah, okay. We don't. We actually help you out uh, in terms of crafting your CV. So what happens here is that when you download and onboard, uh, it's, it's part of like gamification, okay? You just answer the questions that we have in, while you're onboarding. At the end of the at the end of the process, there is actually a button called uh, generate CV where you can actually launch that that button and then you will just create that CV that you can share it with your you know with any of the hirers. In fact, I think you can also download that CV uh, to use it as your as your base as well in case you are looking for a job outside of cable, right? So it helps you. You don't need to go through those CV maker la. You don't need to go through you know, all those uh, workshop, unless you really, really need to, you know, uh, identify strength and all that, we can have a separate breakout session after this. If USM uh, SOA is okay with it, we are more than happy to actually conduct another session where we can help you identify your strength, what are the projects that you can actually shout about, and then using the 30 over catalog of those profession badges that supposedly it will guide you to actually, you know, path your way of okay what can i say about myself you use that first if really cannot and if it's okay with usm to actually you know have this other uh, workshop maybe a smaller one we are more than happy to actually guide this uh work, work it out with you guys okay but otherwise just answer the questions accordingly generate cv and that cv should be good to go all right. Thank you, Ms. Camilla, for the answers. All right. So I, uh, it's almost the end of the talk. So before we wrap things up, is there anything else that uh, from Cable wants to share a little bit more tips, extra tips that we need for the students? Right. If you guys don't feel like doing this manually, job hunting, your whether it's for interns or fresh grad, FYI, uh, February is actually a creative month on the hire side. So there are a lot of actually um, uh, positions that are available for uh, creative jobs, right? That is dedicated to, to you all. So please make sure that you download and let us do the heavy lifting of matching you with those potential hires and those positions. And then please, please start chatting, right? So I'm quite sure that you guys know we all are Asian students, Asian students, very obedient. We all are so quiet. We don't, you know, we don't know whether we are asking right question, not right question. Please just, you know, do this for yourself. You need to find out about the job more than anybody else because at the end of the day, is you guys going to the office on a daily basis. If you don't ask the questions before you sign the marriage letter, right, the ones that's going to suffer is you guys, okay, not us. 
we prepare that platform for you to ask questions. Unlike now, job portal, right? Just look at the JD you apply. You don't even know who the person that you'll be working with until you go through so many hurdles. Machine hurdle, lah. after that, answer so many question hurdle. Then only you get to meet the, 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 the person who is actually the hiring manager. So we want to cut through all that processes, make it easy for you. Once they just swipe right on you, start chatting. So please use the chat box wisely. Okay? Ask questions. If you don't know how to ask, launch question. Right? Take one step at a time. Just launch a question and see how they answer. Okay? So that's all. And we are, yeah, we are here to actually help you guys if while you're actually using the app. If there is anything that you think we should be developing, like I say, Cable wants to develop something that is for you guys, please join our Discord group or we have actually a job seeker group on WhatsApp. Okay, and you can you can say, hey, I am actually facing this, this, this. Is there anything that, you know, you guys can help me with this, this, this? Right, we will appreciate feedback. Okay, so join join our group. All right, join our, on other channels. Yeah, yeah. You can what follow is? us. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Twitter for more information and content as well. If there's anything else you would like to ask, also you can drop us a DM, message us. And yeah, just remember to download Cable, uh, especially if you are interested in tomorrow's Spotlight session happening at 10 o'clock. Um, we have two coming, uh, two companies coming, like Esther said, is uh, Cop Art and Craft and the Hot Shoe Show. They will be also show, showing you uh, what internship opportunities they have uh, mm. with them. So you can directly prepare yourself by doing the, by making the profile, everything, set up everything, and tomorrow you'll be easily, you can just easily like scan the QR and get connected with them. So that's mm. for tomorrow. Stay tuned. Yeah. So I think that is all from our side. Yeah. All right. Thank you for the talk. I would like, so to wrap things up, I would like to say a biggest thank you to Miss Camelia, Miss Yuti yeah. Wei, and Miss Esther for the interesting and resourceful topic for today's talk. And I hope everyone is taking notes and use this information that we gained today as an opportunity to seek suitable places to our internship and our potential employment. So, um, so before we go, I would like to have like a better, uh, a gentle reminder to stay tuned for the next talk by Dr. Iza Esnira. So keep me on unleash your inner personal branding through social media at 2.30 at until 4.30 p.m. later on today. So join us for more exciting activities and panels. Uh, from panels from different backgrounds and in the arts. So stay safe and keep following SOP, everyone. Have a good day ahead of you. Thank you, guys. See you Thank again. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.